In problem number 39, uh, section of section 4.2, we uh, calculate rules for, or find rules for finding the antiderivative of sine squared of x and the antiderivative of cosine squared of x in two different ways. Uh, first is going to be using integration by parts, and the second is we're going to find the rule for the uh, antiderivative of cosine squared of x using the double angle identity. Now, start out by um, Using the method or using the method of integration by parts, and we'll start with sine squared of x. Now, let's write this as sine squared of x times or sine of x times sine of x dx. And we don't really have much choice here, so let's let u equal sine of x and. Um, dv equal sine of x dx, which means that v now is going to be minus, uh, minus cosine x, and du is going to be cosine x dx. Now, this then becomes you know, using the uh, formula for integration by parts. This is uv, or minus sine x cosine x, uh, minus the antiderivative of v du. v is minus cosine, so our sine becomes positive. We have cosine x uh, times cosine x dx, so cosine squared of x dx. Now, if we use the Pythagorean identity, can rewrite the uh, cofit, or we can rewrite the argument of the uh, second term. This becomes negative sine x cosine x plus antiderivative of one minus sine squared of x dx. Here I'm just using the identity that sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x is equal to one, and of course just rearranging it a little bit. So antiderivatives are linear, so we can rewrite this as negative sine x cosine x, and antiderivative of 1 is just x, and it will have minus antiderivative of sine squared of x dx, and since we evaluated the Antiderivative there, we better add a constant to the end. Now, it doesn't look like we've really got anywhere because we just did integration by parts and we still have our original integral there. But since the sign is negative, we can move it to the other side and actually just solve for, uh, solve for the antiderivative without computing it explicitly. So if we notice that this here is equal to sine squared of x dx, so let's just add sine squared of x dx to both sides of the equation. That gives us 2 times antiderivative of sine squared of x dx. And on the right, that leaves us with negative sine of x cosine of x plus x plus c. Now, what we really want is a formula for sine squared of x. So we divide by 2 on both sides. And if we just let this c here equal 1 half of the previous c, we can just keep our uh, equation a little bit nicer by just writing c. And we see that here we have formula for sine squared of x, for the antiderivative of sine squared of x. Now, we could use a similar procedure for finding the antiderivative of cosine squared of x, or we could just use the Pythagorean identity, which says that uh, cosine squared of x uh, plus sine squared of x is equal to 1 or just rearranging this a little bit, 
cosine squared of x is equal to 1 minus sine squared of x. And now let's just take the antiderivative of both sides. So antiderivative of cosine squared of x, which is dx, which is what we're looking for, is going to be equal to antiderivative of 1 minus sine squared of x. Now this will be equal to x minus the antiderivative of sine squared of x, which we already know is um, negative 1 half sine x cosine x plus 1 half x plus c. Now this is will be equal to x plus 1 half sine x cosine x minus 1 half x. But since we have x minus 1 half x, we might as well just write x over 2 and minus c, but we can just relabel a constant and keep it c there. So here we have the formula for the antiderivative of cosine squared of x. Now the, um, the next way or the next method that we're going to use is to use the double angle identity, which says that um, well for the cosine it says that cosine of 2x is equal to 2 cosine squared of x minus 1. And the natural thing to do here is just to take the antiderivative of both sides and solve for the antiderivative of cosine squared of x. So we'll do exactly that. And we're left with uh, here we'll have one half sine of 2x. Um, and then on the right hand side we'll have uh, 2 uh, times the antiderivative of cosine squared of x dx minus x plus a constant. Now, Let's solve for uh, antiderivative of cosine squared. And we get x plus 1 half, oh, should I end up with 1 half times um, x plus 1 half times the sine of 2x plus c, which is just equal to x over 2 plus 1 half, uh, or excuse me, 1 quarter sine of 2x plus some constant. Now, it might be wondering here, why does this look different than uh, the formula that we came up, came up with earlier, which says that the uh, antiderivative of cosine squared of x is x over 2 plus 1 half sine x cosine x plus c. So again, I'll write that here. And we need to ask ourselves, is this actually true? x over 2 plus sine x cosine x. plus c. Now our, x o, our c and the x over 2 terms look fine. Problem here are the 1 quarter sine 2x and 1 half sine x cosine x. So if we use the double angle identity for sine here, we can rewrite this in a different way. So this is going to be equal to 1 quarter. Now the double angle identity for sine says that um, sine of I'll write it over here. Sine of 2x is equal to 2 
sine x, cosine x. So this reduces down to 1 quarter times 2 uh, sine x, cosine x, which is equal to, of course, just 1 half sine x, cosine x. So you can see that the two, the two different methods that we use to uh, compute the antiderivatives give indeed the same answer. We can get rid of this question mark here and say that, verify that yes, these two do equal.